Howdy folks, little John, welcome to the brewery and uh, new episode of Brew School and today I'm going to be talking and looking at, at actually uh, steeping some specialty grains for adding to your kit beer. Uh, it's something I've touched on on plenty of videos but never really sat down and done something a little bit more specific on the process uh, and chatting about the ins and outs. So that's what we're going to do today. So before we get into it, thumbs up to all the uh, patrons, the Little Johns. Uh, cheers guys for your support. Uh, if you're interested in Patreon and seeing what it's about, there's a link down the bottom. Hit that and have a look. Uh, also thank you to the subscribers of the channel. If you're not the same thing, if you're not subscribed, hit the button down there in the bottom. Uh, and if you're watching the video and you're liking what's going on, hit the like button as well. All these things help out. Uh, getting a little bit of help today from uh, the latest beer to go on under the tap, which is the uh, this is the Blue Mountain Lager, uh, which was done under pressure with uh, 3470 slurry. That brew was just done with some uh, just Morton Dex by memory. Anyway, you can go back and have a look at that if you want to. I'll put a link up to the uh, to Bruto. But what we want, what we're talking about is steeping grains. Uh, now, when you start off with your kits and yeah, we're talking yeah extract cans sort of thing uh, yeah, coopers or brew makers or whoever whoever they are but pre-hopped extract can obviously where yeah most of us start out with our brewing uh, and we generally start off by adding some sugar to this and as we know with various kinds of sugar uh, work better than others um, but that's where that's where we start from and as we sort of progress a little bit with our brewing we you know, go from more simple sugars and get a little bit more experimental with the malts and things. Uh, and quite often you'll find that the following steps after those extra sugars or the extra malts are steeping grain and adding hops. Now, those two can go together or they can certainly be done separately. Um, and today I'm looking at the steeping grains from two angles, from just being on its own in the kit and also from that angle of um, adding a bit of a hop addition into your kits as well. So put these aside for the moment because they're not going to be bloody any good to me. So, so we want to steep some grain. Why do we steep, steep grain? A uh, couple of reasons. One is it adds extra flavour to the beer, uh, extra body, uh, can create some extra interest and character uh, in the in the beer after. It can build a little bit of character and stuff so you can use different grains to get different sort of finishes. Um, it can be used to some degree as a fermentable sugar um, but for the most part, with steeping grains, you're not looking at getting sugars. You're not looking at adding any real fermentables by using grain. It's simply flavour, body, and a little bit of colour. Um, so you're still going to use your malts and dextrose and stuff to get your ABV up, to get your gravity up. Um, you're only using, at this point, with, with steeping, just for that flavour enhancement. If you want sugars then you need to go into mashing which requires, it's a very very similar process uh, but for the most part you're going to use different grains. Okay. Now for very quickly on the difference. To mash you require base malts which are I think, pale malts, um, Marisota GP, uh, Golden Promise, Pilsner malt, Munich, Vienna, things like that. Generally the stuff at the lighter end, uh, but they're referred to as a base malt and that's because they form the base of a beer if you're doing all grain. 
and they have you've heard we've heard me refer to this word that diastatic power which is they have enzymes within the grain when they're put into water which allows them to convert the proteins into sugars which are then fermentable um, so that's what a mash is mash is the process of converting those proteins to sugars okay um, with steeping we're talking about caramel malts and crystal malts specialty malts is what they the deadly thing referred to as crystal um, sorry specialty malts and they come under generally two carries there's caramel malts crystal malts and there's a few others um, and that just refers to the process they've undergone they've been caro is short for caramelization crystal is short for crystallization um, it's pretty much the same thing just depends on which malta Oh, sorry, maltster is doing as, as do it which which terminology they use but essentially they take their base malt they cook it for longer at a higher temperature um, and that process converts the starches within the grain and cooks them uh, so what that results in is that the sugars are converted into flavor within the grain um, which means with, by adding them into water, steeping, we can extract that flavour. Uh, problem is because those sugars have been converted by heat, they've already been they've been used as part of that caramelisation or the crystallisation. They've been used, so we don't extract sugar. So you don't extract anything that's fermentable. There'd be a little bit. Uh, I've done a video where I've compared base malt to crystal malts with um, I've compared sparging and steeping um, so quite a while back go and have a look for it I'm not going to link it up because it's not, not a, the greatest video and it's a little hard to follow um, but for the most part with the steeping on this video all we're looking at is just gr the grains that are going to add some flavour okay so we're talking those specialty malts now those grains will vary a hell of a lot now, before I get into that, I'm going to get this on. So, the steeping process is you have an amount of water, which I've got here in the pot. Now, you don't need a lot because you generally, because you're steeping, you're not going with a lot of grain. Um, today, I'm using 150 grams of grain. So, I've got about three litres of water here in the uh, in the stock pot. And I've heated that to about, uh, we're sitting on 75, let's see where we're at at the moment. Now, ideally for steeping, we want to start our steep somewhere around 70 degrees. Um, oh, and that's sitting a bit, at, probably that's, that's sitting at 71 degrees, which is fine. Now, your, your temperature isn't super important. And the reality is you can steep with cold water, you can steep, but you don't want to get it too hot. If you go too hot, you start getting you start getting some unwanted sort of flavours. So about 70 is a good mark uh, to get there. So just use a bag of some kind in your pot is easier. So I just got a, a, a grain bag for a brewing, you know, brewing a bag bag. Uh, pop that in. Now I've got no heat under my pot because I don't want to melt this bag and we don't need to keep the heat on okay and that's just my grain being, being crushed and I need a spoon and I just get that in the water and give it a little bit of a mix nice and easy very simple and pop me a lid on. Okay. So as I said, a couple of litres of water. Uh, you don't need a lot. You can do it with two litres and you realistically you could do that with a smaller saucepan on your on your stove top. Um, I've got this little six litre six litre stock pot, um, which is a good size. And 
that will sort of explain a little bit later on. But, that, but if you can, use something that sort of size, about that six litre mark, it's on a bit bigger. Put two and a half, three litres of water in there. Okay, now, I had my grain, I've ground it up. <laughs> I had to actually pull out my Corona mill, I've just, it's on the end of the table here, you can't actually see it, it's off, it's off camera. Um, which I've not used for a long time, but I wasn't, I don't have any crushed grain, uh, I, keep, I get all my grain whole and unmilled, so I've got to crush it. Uh, normally on a brew day I'm, I'm milling, yeah, four to seven or eight kilos of grain. Uh, and I run my drillers through my um, roller mill. But <laughs> today for 150 grams, I just was easy just to pull the corona out and show him on the table. Um, for those who aren't aware of what the corona mill is, I'll just put him. <laughs> I'll pull it off. This fella, uh, you'll see these all over the net. And this is where a little, some people was, used to be a common place to start when you were doing your own, your own mill. Uh, because they were cheap. Like, like these days, I think you can buy them for about $50. I think I, well, I remember when I bought that, I probably paid about $70 or $80. But at the time, an actual two roller mill was pushing 200 bucks. Um, so, you do need, you don't need a mill. If you're going to do some steeping, just buy your grain ready milled um, from your brew shop or if you're ordering it online or whatnot, just get them to crush it for you. Uh, so, your grain comes like so, it's whole, uncrushed, and we need to get inside of it, we need to get inside that grain to get the goodness out. So, hence why we hit it with the grain, with the mill, just to break it so we can get into it. Uh, they're a solid grain, it's not a lot, but you've got to get into that stuff on the inside. Okay, that's what we're after. So, now, I'm just going to throw a quick timer on here. Du -du 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 -du. And I want, to, I want this to sit for about 20 minutes to get um, that extraction of flavour. Okay. Now, what's going to happen in that steep now is that water's going to get in there and drag out those crystal nice bloody bits of grain and it's going to make some nice, nice flavour. The temperature's going to drop and I'm not worried about that. Uh, again, this is the difference between mashing and steeping. Mashing you need to keep it at a very strict temperature. Steeping we don't need to worry about temperature because again we're not trying to convert anything and that happens at particular temperatures. We're simply just dragging out flavour, and I said it can be done at all different temperatures. Then if you play around with it, you'll find that different temperatures will give you a slightly different result on how that flavour comes out. But, I'm going to let that go 20 minutes. Now, there is a massive range of malts that are available to you to add to your brews and the grain you use is going to vary immensely depending on what kind of beer you are making. Uh, now, I said, I've got three grain, I'll put three grains in here and I'm not actually going to really use this. I haven't got a brew on. Uh, this is just, I said, just simply so we can see what we're doing. But I pull the three grains out because more about three I want to talk about. Because for me, these are three good grains to have to work with if you, if you are looking to do some steeping for flavour. Okay. First one, the one I just showed there, uh, is called Carahel. Now, you'll see a lot of people refer to Carapils um, to help with your beer. They talked about head retention and, and stuff. Um, Carapils is the lightest of the caramels. It's the Pilsner malt has only just got a little bit extra roasting done uh, and it's commonly used because it doesn't really add a lot in the way of flavour or colour um, but it does help with a little bit of foam production but for me Carahill is the go-to if you want to steep for a light beer yeah so this is a prime example 
the dry, you know, black rock dry lager. If you're doing a lager type beer, a light beer, uh, Carahel is perfect. It's a, it's, a, it's a bit lighter, it's not as intense, but it will give you a little, a nice little bit of flavour. We'll bring out some you know, nice little malts and it's got a touch of, uh, it's a touch grainier and in, in some cases a little biscuity depending on how much you use. But in the amounts we're using, not a hell of a lot, but it will drag some extra flavour and it works really well in a lager. Good one to have for steeping. Um, one of my, my favourite specialty grains, Carahel. Uh, the other one I've got here is medium crystal. Yeah, you, see, you see pale crystal around all the time. Everyone does pale crystal, pale crystal. Or, or sometimes we refer to it as light crystal. Um, but I prefer medium. Uh, and that's through there. You can see it's a little bit dark. It's got a good colour on it. You get a few green and darker ones and you can see the inside of the grains if it's picking up is quite um, quite darkened. Now that's a really good grain for getting some nice deep multi character. Um, some nice touches of caramel that will put a nice little bit of colour into um, into a beer. So it will work really well in pale ales. Uh, if you're just looking for that little, you know, just to give them a little bit more oomph. Uh, if you're doing a standard pale ale, and you, you can use crystal malt to get some extra flavour, um, and use a little bit less actual dry malt in your mix. So you can push a little bit more dextrose, a bit less dry malt, and then use your crystal to, to bring up some you know, nice levels of caramel and, and deeper malts and it bring, can, brings in a nice bit of colour and again depending on the amount you use and as I said we stick it, I've got 150 grams in here and this is it's a good point to start, 150 is pretty well a good point to start with um, with your beers, with your steeping so you're not putting in too much influence while you're still playing around and learning what works and what doesn't. Um, yeah. Another malt that I do use, yeah, recommend for steeping is chocolate malt. Yeah. Let's pull them out here, and you see, much darker. It's still only a brown. It's deep brown. It's not blackened. Uh, but. Adds really nice characters into the beer. Um, despite the name of chocolate malt, it doesn't really provide chocolate flavour, um, which I think a lot of people fall for that one. They think chocolate malt's going to give them a chocolate finish. It doesn't. Chocolate just simply refers to the colour and the smell. Um, you will get some hints of chocolate, but it's more a very deep dark chocolate sort of a flavour. You're not going to get the lighter chocolate flavour that most people sort of after or thinking about when they're thinking about chocolate in a beer. That sort of stuff that comes from using cacao, using nibs or powder. Uh, won't come from the malt. Chocolate malt well, can add some coffee notes. It will add, add a touch of roastiness and a little bit extra grainy bitterness. Um, and some nice bit of deeper multi flavours uh, and it will add good colour. So if you're looking for, as I say, you, if you're getting into a, 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 yeah, pommy bitters, ESBs, um, even like mild ales, golden ales even, uh, standard IPAs, uh, that West Coast IPA or um, not these new, you know, not new hazies and stuff like that, but a more standard IPA, a British IPA or a West Coast IPA. A little bit of chocolate malt works nice uh, to bring in some colour and that extra depth of flavour. Um, it works good. 
Worth good if you're doing stouts, you know, stouts and porters, you, um, dark ales, stuff like that, steep some chocolate malt, get that in there. Um, on its own will work really well in those sort of styles that give you some extra character. Uh, and quite often, for me anyway, stout kits and dark ales and things are lacking in that really big depth of grain. And that's crystal, crystal and the chocolate and that sort of beer would work really well. Um, but then there, there is others. Yeah, that's only three. There's, there's so many different crystal malts and there's different ways you can use them, obviously depending on the beer. Um, you can get into your roast barleys and your, your specials and your carafas, which are deeply intense. They're very dark. They'll provide a lot of flavour. They'll provide a lot of colour. Uh, if you're doing, if you've got a can, an I, can of IPA and you want to you want to do a red IPA, something like a carrot aroma uh, is really good at dragging out red colours. Uh, there's obviously there's a lot more malts coming out now from a lot of, particularly a lot of the local guys and and New Zealand Gladfield. There's um, I think it's Shepherd's, I think it might be called Shepherd's Delight, I think. Um, there's Red X, uh, I think there's a Redback malt. There's a lot of, lot more malts that are coming red. Obviously with the red IPA and the red um, Irish ales becoming quite popular, then a lot of the monsters have looked away from getting that red hue into the beer. So that, um, that option is becoming a lot more readily available. Alright, so yeah, we've got our pot on. Now been going for uh, nearly ten minutes. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a stir. Right. Yeah, you can see the colour there. It's not super dark. Right. Now I don't know what the temperature is there. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what that temperature is. Those flavours are coming out. Now, to use this in your brew, on brew day, is, yeah, nice and simple. Uh, and you've seen, watch videos, doing kits, not doing a bit of a boil. Um, we use this the same as I would use a malt boil. Uh, on those on those videos, we do this and get this happening while we get it, while you're getting everything else set up. So you get your get your grain on, um, and as I said, if you've got your grain ready milled and it's in a bag ready to go, this is a very simple process. You pop your pot on the stove, put a bag in, you know, and you get it steeping while you're getting everything else set up. After your 20 minutes, we pull the bag out. Just drain out any water that's in there, and then we bring it to a boil. Now, any time you're using grain in your brew, you need to boil the liquid that's come off it. Um, grains have, can have bugs and things on them that um, we don't want in the beer. There can be things on there that will spoil your beer. Uh, if you don't kill them. So, <laughs> this is fun. When I first started brewing, I, um, you know, talking, you know, 26 years ago, um, there wasn't much information. The first time, my first couple of times I ever used grain, I just bloody stuck it in a bucket of water and soaked it for bloody, oh God, you know, an hour or so, and then just stuck that in the fermenter and added everything else to it. Uh, I don't remember ever actually having a, you know, really bad beer out of it, but it was probably more luck than anything else. But that's why we want, we want to boil, we want to boil the grain. And you've only got to boil it for five minutes, just long enough to kill anything off and make sure it's all nice and nice and safe. Yeah, it's the same as everything else. It's that sanitation, cleanliness and sanitation thing. Treat that, treat that the same. Now, 
this is where we get into if you want to use hops then you can add hops so this is a good place if you do want to add a little bit of hops into your brew same as I said same as when I'm doing that malt boil stick your hops in there boil it for boil it for five minutes with your hops in and the same thing using the bag for your hops and then take it then take them out and we use that liquid then as our hot water component so instead of putting two two liters of hot water into the uh, or boiling water into the fermenter and then adding, then adding our, our can and mixing up and going from there we just use this pot full instead and top it up and away we go so you're going to get I'm going to say very little in the way of gravity points from this, especially like at, at this amount, 150 grams. Um, but doesn't need 150. You can steep 100 grams. You can steep five, 500 grams. Um, depends on what you're doing and what you're after and the grain you've got. But I said for the most part, if you are just steeping, you don't really want too much in a go because it will give you quite a bit of flavour. Um, if you're getting into Partials, that's a little bit different story, and that's something for another day. Um, and that is something we'll be coming up soon, in the near, not too far out right in the future, I will be doing an actual partial mash, which we'll be doing this, but actually with base and creating a mash that we'll re add to a tin. So we'll use the actual, make that mash to create our fermentable sugars. So we'll just use a tin and the mash. We won't use any dry malt or any dextrose or anything like that. Uh, but that's again different process so if you're doing this you're basically just calculating working on your recipe the same as you normally would your 10 your 1 1.2 1.4 kilos of various sugars and this boil added in you top up your 23 liters bang you got your beer you might get one gravity point out, out, of, out of this out of this steep you won't get really anything more than that uh, and the darker the grain is that you're using, the less gravity you're going to get out, the less you will get out of it. Uh, if you're doing more, a lot of light stuff, like so if you're doing say 150 grams of carahel, then you might get a you might get a point or two. Uh, where if you're doing say 150 grams of medium crystal, you, you you might not get that at all. You're not even really going to notice the impact impact that that's going to have. Okay. But the biggest biggest thing is it's the same as everything with the brewing. With whatever you're doing, take notes, record what you've done, take some tasting records so you can see, okay, you know, add it add some grain, add a nice steep into a brew that you've done previously. So you've got a yardstick, you've got something to go off. Um, now obviously everyone's not just going to be doing split batches and can do side by side like like I do uh, so but you need to have that point of working from and I would suggest that initially starting fairly simple now and by that I mean like sticking with your lighter with your lighter end so maybe some carapils in, in, into a lager maybe a little bit of carahel into a pale ale or even an IPA um, just for a little bit extra uh, so you're not going over the top but again play around this batch I've got here what I've done today I said with these three today is I did uh, it was 70 grams of the medium crystal seven, no 60 grams of carahel and 20 grams of the chocolate now that I would be looking to use in I said maybe, I said maybe an English bitter, a golden ale. I would possibly even look at adding that into this fellow, like a draft tin. Um, a lighter brew that's not, you know, it's not really quite a lager or a pilsner. Uh, and it's not a lot, it's not going to add a real lot. It will pick that up nicely. Um, a real ale. Uh, but to some degree, we work in almost anything. 
at that level because it's not going to provide a lot of depth of colour or flavour. Um, but that's it, the main thing. Notes, keep records. Um, if you brew, like if you brew the same beers, same brews sort of over and over, or the same similar sort of beers, then you're gonna you're gonna be able to see what difference they're gonna make. Um, and you can see from one brew to another. Okay, if I change this and I put a little bit more of this grain in, put a little bit more. You know, if I put more medium crystal in this one, or a little bit of chocolate or some roast barley or some carafa, um, you're gonna understand what the differences are. But on that front, don't go making big, you know, big changes at once. So to say, if you just do that first brew with just one kind of one kind of grain and steep that, you're gonna understand what difference it's made. Add something else into that one next time around, or change the grain on the on the on the next batch, so you can see what it does. Um, so you can work out, okay, well I like that, I don't like this. Uh, but this this mix here, like if if you're if you're, if you're gonna throw that in with three different malts into a beer uh, and you don't like what it does, you're not going to understand exactly where that's coming from. Um, I understand where they're coming from because I've done them. And part of the reason why I, I mixed the grains up was I just didn't want to use 150 grams of one particular grain um, when I'm not going to actually use one, when I'm just going to throw it out. This mix is not a this is not a recommended mix. This isn't like okay, this is what you should be using. It's a mix you could use, but you don't have to. So this this is probably now. And you've got 30 seconds to go. No, just have the lid pop the lid off. Now let's just check the temperature on this. We'll probably find it's probably dropped quite a few degrees in the um, in the process. And as I said, it doesn't really matter if it does drop with with doing a steam. Um, yeah, so it's looking like it's somewhere around 60, probably about 63 degrees. 63 and a bit. Alright, and that's our 20 minute steam. It's done. As I said, we pull the bag out, let it drain and we just bring it to a boil. And like I said, you just pull the bag out, nice and easy. Let a little bit of that run out, you don't need to, I mean you can wait a little bit. But you could put a colander or something on that if you wanted to. Give it a bit of a squeeze, that's done. Bring that to a boil. And that's it. And this stuff's the same as, it's the same as using any more. You're going to produce a hot break. And this is what I was talking about before about why this six litre pot's a good one. Uh, because it will handle a good size hot break with that sort of two and a half to three litres of water in there. You've got plenty of room for a hot break. Hot break won't be, any, won't be as big, or shouldn't be as big, on a steep uh, because there's not as many unconverted proteins in there but you will still get some hot break bring it to a boil get your hot break boil it for five minutes into your fermenter or get some hops in there yeah uh, and then get that in get, then get that into your fermenter and away you go so that's steeping for adding to your adding to your uh, to your kit brews um, or even the extract brews um, mind you, extract brews, you've got to boil anyway. Um, but this is a way you can also add extra flavour to your extract brews by still doing this and putting in some grain component. Uh, so if you've got any comments, any questions on this process, or uh, you know, any particular grains that, you know, if you're interested in finding out what sort of grains might work for a certain sort of a style, yeah, ask away down the bottom. Always answer, always answer questions, no worries at all. Uh, but that's it. I'm done. So once again, thumbs up for the Patreons. 
cheers to all the subscribers. The information's down below for Patreon. Links to uh, Little John's website. Subscribe button down there if you haven't hit it. Hit the like button if you haven't hit it already. Uh, but that's me. Done for the day. The Little John Brew School over and done with. So I'll tell you, I'll see you again. We're uh, brewing beer, drinking beer or talking beer. Good brewing.